Well, welcome, and hopefully you were able to see that last video um, with the experiment with the walnut. And so that's where we'll begin today, is talking a little bit about energy and ATP. Um, and so we start out with that walnut. So first, let's just ask the first question, and that is, what's in that walnut? Well, you may remember back to our macromolecules lecture and thinking about, well, which macromolecules are actually in the walnut? And if you said all four of them, then you're exactly right. It's gonna have proteins and carbohydrates and nucleic acids and lipids are all in that walnut. But if we think about energy and specifically which of those particular macromolecules are contributing to the energy, hopefully you're just gonna be focusing in on the carbohydrates and lipids, and that's exactly what's actually going to happen. If we talk a little bit about the combustion process, we know that we're gonna actually be taking all of those carbohydrates and lipids and combusting them. Through the process, we know that the byproducts are kind of the end um, thing that comes out as the combustion is CO2 and water. And so we're not actually destroying the carbon or the hydrogen or the oxygen atoms themselves. We know that they're actually still intact, but we're really just kind of rearranging the bonds that keeps all of those things as a carbohydrate or what we know as a lipid intact. And so we know that by this rearrangement that probably the energy that we know a little bit about those things is actually somewhere in their bonds. And so we can talk a little bit more about that today. So let's start out with the um, mechanism or kind of the, the structure that we use to be able to measure the energy that was in that walnut. And so we know we started out with a walnut and we had went ahead and, and set fire to it and we had those 10 milliliters of water that we then kind of watched the temperature over the course of the experiment. And so let's take some of the data that we were able to collect um, and I'll kind of uh, re remind you of what some of those numbers were in just a minute. And we can populate this table here. And so the first um, four kind of blocks, if you will, talk a little bit about the water, the things we measured with the water. And specifically, we were looking at temperature. We wanted to know where it started, where it ended, and then the ones to the right talk a little bit about our food and specifically the mass of that food. In our case, it was a walnut. And so we know if we start filling in the data that we started out with water that was about 22 degrees C and the walnut started about 0.98 grams. Of course, at the end of the experiment, we know that we measured again and found that the water had risen to about 82 degrees C and the food had actually reduced to about 0.69 grams. And so the only pieces we now have is that we don't actually um, have yet is this calculation of the change in temperature and the change in mass of both our water and our food. So of course, we can do a little bit of algebra and easily figure those things out. And so the change of the symbol we have here, this little triangle, just simply represents um, change. This is the symbol delta. And so that change in temperature, we just take 82 minus 22, and that leaves us with 60 degrees C. And so we know that the water increased um, 60 degrees C. Whereas we can say, well, what happened to the mass of our food item? Well, we can just take those numbers, 0.98, and take away 0.69, and say, well, we actually reduced 0.29 grams. And so we can take these data and ask the main question that we're really interested in, and that is how much energy is actually in our food item? And of course, you may remember back to macromolecules and the fact that we talked about calories as kind of this unit or this way to measure energy. And so that's how we're gonna be measuring it um, today. So but before we do that, let's introduce this idea of specific heat. So specific heat is essentially the energy that's required to heat some substance, and specifically one gram of that substance, one degree C. And so we talk about water, it only requires one calorie of energy to raise it one gram um, of that material of water on one degree C. And so the specific heat of water is simply one. We can then remember these are the stats that we figured out before. The change in temperature for our experiment was 60 degrees C, and the change in mass was 0.29 grams. And so we could then be able to use an equation to kind of figure out how much energy was in that walnut, knowing all of this little bits of information. And the equation says that the amount of energy is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. It's important to remember that all the pieces off to the right-hand side um, refer to the water that we actually were using to be able to measure um, how much energy was actually in that particular food item. So I'm gonna take that highlighted yellow piece and just raise it up a little bit. So here it is, same thing. And so we can kind of be able to say, well, what were some of these things? What was the mass of the water that we used? 
Well, we didn't really have something in grams. We knew that it was 10 milliliters. And so if we know then the conversion of water is one milliliter equals one gram of water, then we know that by having 10 milliliters, we actually had 10 grams of water. And that's important because if you were given a different mass, say maybe you had one gram of water, or if you had 100 grams of water, you would actually need to change that number. But for our purposes, that's what we had in our experiment. In addition, we knew that the specific heat, as we already mentioned, of water equals one, and so we know that the next piece simply equals one. If we'd use something else, say we did the entire experiment in oil, and we had this little um, cup of oil that we were then heating, then we know that the specific heat of that item would actually be different. But for our purposes, we use water, so it equals one. And then finally, that change in temperature was the thing that we actually measured, we calculated from our experiment. So if you remember, that equal to 60 degrees C. And so if we take all three of these pieces and actually put it into the equation, 60 times 1 times 10 equals 600 calories. You may be sitting there thinking to yourself, 600 calories, I may never eat a walnut again. And that may be true, um, but you have to remember that perhaps calories with a little c and calories with a big c are really not exactly the same thing. And that's because they're not. They're on different orders of magnitude. So one calorie, what we refer to as a dietary calorie, actually equals 1,000 calories, which is what we just calculated. So to be able to get those on the same scale and get the calories or the energy we calculated from our walnut in terms of dietary calories, we take that 600 and divide it by 1,000. So we now can see that that particular walnut we had was only 0.6 dietary, dietary calories. <clears throat> But we, of course, have to remember that that 0.6 calories doesn't mean a whole lot. It really depends on how much walnut you had. If you have the walnut to the left versus the walnut to the right, it may mean a whole lot different things because there's a whole lot more mass to the left than there is to the right. So we simply just relativize it by dividing by that. If you remember that mass of the food item that we calculated, that was just the change in mass, saying when you start out with one number, you end with another because some of it was lost through the burning process. And so we then have this final number, which essentially states, yes, we have roughly about two calories per gram of walnut. That's how much energy that walnut actually had. However, if we actually go and we find a nutrition label for walnuts, we can see we get a little bit different story. Specifically, we can see that if we have the total grams and we have the total calories and we do the math, we can actually see that it tells us we have about six and a half calories per gram which is actually significantly higher than what we just calculated. And so again, are we wondering are the nutrition facts leading us astray? And they're really not. The simple answer is, is that the equipment that we used was not that precise. It was not that efficient and a lot of energy was lost. Because we know that as we're burning that particular walnut, that a lot of that heat that was being released, not all of it was actually being absorbed into that test tube that was containing the water. Some of it was actually lost to the surrounding environment. And really only about 10 to 20% is actually captured with the instrumentation that we are able to be able to provide. And so we know that our estimate is, is, is somewhat of a reflection, but not all that accurate. And that's an important piece to remember. So now let's talk a little bit about some important pieces of information to kind of put this into context. 